if you're purchasing in Charlotte for the first time, you probably are looking at the contract and you're seeing this clause about due diligence and you're very confused depending on what market you're coming from or what your real estate background is, you might be really confused about what that due diligence fee and due diligence period is exactly. And this is something that changed um, quite a few years ago. When I got started in real estate, there was no due diligence uh, period or fee that was paid. And now there is, and it's really thrown a wrench in buyer's plans and sort of thrown a wrench in the whole process, especially if you, you know, purchased a home without a due diligence fee previously, and now you're coming back in the market and you've got to pay this, you know, fee to the seller and you don't know exactly what it is. So I want to take a moment to explain what the due diligence process looks like and the goal of it. So number one, in a due diligence contract, which is the North Carolina standard contract, you are paying a fee to the seller to take the home off the market. So the fee is market driven. There's no flat rate. It's not, you know, $50 a day. It's not $500 a week. There's no exact amount for this fee. So in a very hot seller's market, you're going to see the fee is going to increase on a property that was underpriced that has multiple offers. You're going to see the fee is going to increase. So again, it is market based and it depends on the price point of the property and how well it's priced and how long it's been on the market. So it's definitely one of those matters and one of those amounts that you need to turn towards your expert advisor, your real estate agent to really get a gauge on what do we have to go in at to be competitive. And I love this because as an agent who's been in the market for almost 14 years, I really can you know gauge and give my clients that advice that is, that is critical and that makes sure that they you know, get the contract without overpaying for the contract. So you're going to offer the sellers a fee. So let's say the house is listed for $400,000 and you offer them a $1,000 due diligence fee. You're going to pay them this fee, this $1,000, which comes back to you when and if you close on the house, you get this money back. Um, but you're paying this to the sellers at time of contract in order for them to take the home off the market and change the MLS status to under contract. They might still show the home for backup offers or they may choose to just you know roll with your contract but they're taking the home off the market in a super competitive seller's market we're going to make that due diligence fee as short as we can so two weeks if we can get the inspector lined up immediately if we can get your lender to get the appraiser in there right away if we can get title work turned back in a few days if we can get these things done in a really timely manner a two-week due diligence is really quick and aggressive. And that shows the seller that you're interested and that you're going to make a decision and kick the tires very quickly and move forward. A more realistic time frame is closer to three weeks. So in order to not be under a significant gun, especially if we anticipate issues on the inspection. So the problem that most commonly comes up is this. You get under contract on the house and two weeks into the contract, we get the inspection report back and we say, oh my gosh, like there's, there's structural items, there's termites, there's a number of things that need to be evaluated further. So we contact these specialists, we contact a structural engineer, we contact a um, termite company, and these companies typically book out quite far. So they're not available next day to come out and take a look. So we have to renegotiate that due diligence period. We say to the seller, you know, hey, this is what we found. We found termites, we found structural issues. Here's the report. Will you allow us another 10 days on top of our due diligence period to get these items you know, looked at so we know what we're getting into? And some sellers will say, no, they'll say, we don't want to know the findings. We're going to go back on market. We don't care. Um, and that is a risk that some, seller, some sellers are willing to take. Other sellers will say, sure, no problem. And the third case is additionally, sellers can say, we will extend for another 10 days, but instead of $1,000, we want you to pay an additional $2,000 because we want to make sure you're certain on this. We want to make sure that there's that unless the, the situation that shows up in these specialists is major, we want to make sure that you're on board and you plan to move forward. So oftentimes in competitive market, buyers will agree to pay this additional fee or we as a buyer's agent may negotiate a, a separate fee. So we might say, instead of $2,000, can we do an additional you know, $750? Can we negotiate this fee down to a more reasonable amount? And oftentimes we can make that happen. So let's say the buyer has got an extension for an additional 10 days. We get the specialist in under the due diligence period. The buyer is now out or has invested the $1,000 initial due diligence plus the 750 that we were able to negotiate with the extension. So the buyer gets in their termite guy, they get in the engineer, 
And you know, we've got referrals to all these people. So they can use our folks or they can call their own. Matters not to us as long as they're professional and know what they're doing. So we get the engineer under there. The termite guy says there's no problem at all. This is you know very minimal. There's you know two termite tubes. We can take care of this for, for minimal cost. So that's no problem. So we get the engineer under the house who says there's you know 20 feet of band seal damage, and that's gonna cost us eleven thousand dollars. And so the buyer freaks out. <laughs> so as the agent, we ask the buyer to provide us what they would like as their ask. And we go to the seller, the seller's agent rather, and we say, this is the ask of the buyer. They are not willing to move forward unless these things are addressed. So we provide them invoices. We provide the buyer's agent or the seller's agent reports and the engineer's report and the home inspection report. They take a look at it. These items now become material fact. So as a buyer, if you're asking for ridiculous things, if you're asking for a door that doesn't latch, if you're asking for a squeaky you know, cabinet drawer that rolls in, you know, makes an obnoxious noise or a light fixture that has, you know, broken bulbs, <laughs> things like that. You know, a lot of sellers will kind of laugh you off the, laugh you off the contract and say, you know, tough, you're not ready to buy a house. If you're presenting realistic things, things that are material fact, and once they know about them as a seller, they have to redisclose them. So termites, structural issues, roof leaks, things like that that you find in your report, these now become things that the seller has to disclose. So bringing up those critical items really puts you in a place of power when it comes to negotiating under due, under due diligence. So we try to bring these up to the seller's agent to make them understand that these are not only issues that are going to cause this contract to fall apart, but these are now things that they have to either fix or disclose for the next buyer. And that really puts you in a position of power when it comes to getting the best terms. So the seller then has to respond by end of due diligence. If they don't respond by end of due diligence, we offer them a termination. Um, so oftentimes the seller will come to terms. They really have two different options at this point. The seller can choose number one, to make the repairs. We're always a little skeptical of this if we don't know the vendors on the front end. So we don't want you know Bob's, Bob's band sale company coming out to make the band sale repair. We don't want a patch job. We don't want some crap work done that our clients are then stuck with because we know that our clients are come back to us in you know 10 years five years whenever to resell this home and we don't want to have issues come back up so we really want a either number one a reputable company going out to go make these repairs or number two we want the seller to give a credit so that our vendors or a reputable vendor that we worked with in the past can go out and make the repairs after closing so these are really the two options that the seller has to offer the buyer and again, we always tell our buyers, get that credit and then work with this stuff after closing. So you're not under the gun of completing the stuff, you know, in two weeks before you close and you're already moving. Just take care of this stuff once you're in and you're settled and, you know, you can get it done. You can oversee it and you're living in the house a lot easier to get it done that way. So that's my advice for negotiating due diligence. And that's kind of, I would say due diligence is definitely the most confusing part of our contract, especially to people moving from out of area. If you haven't ever purchased um, a commercial property before, um, commercial guys are very used to due diligence periods where you do all the tire kicking under a predetermined period of time. Our residential contracts are very unique having a, a due diligence period in North Carolina. I hope this was helpful. Um, if it was, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you.